There was an interesting article last week in the FT from the chief economist at Credit Suisse, James Sweeney, about looking beyond headline GDP data for measuring macroeconomic performance. So this relates to something that I've thought about a lot in the past when it comes to making trading decisions, which is that you have the economic data that you know the market is looking at and you know the market is going to react to in the short term, you know, where the release of it is going to lead to some sort of instant knee jerk reaction. And then you have the economic data or other data that actually shows how something is performing, which will therefore dictate the future direction of the market. So you have the data that causes short term reactions and the data that truly shows what's going on and therefore dictates the long term reaction, the long term direction. Now, the pandemic is undeniably changing the way that things are being done. And the way we look at economic data and measures of the economy have also started to shift as well. So James Sweeney says body temperatures, foot traffic, Internet trends and stimulus check arrivals represent a small sample of the data that have been critical in assessing real time economic activity. These measures have told a more precise story of the 2020 economy than national account measures such as gross domestic product or inflation. Now he points out that nominal GDP is a useful and clearly defined statistic, but that measure obviously means real GDP plus inflation. And a lot of the issue there is with the measurement of inflation, because if that measure of inflation is wrong, it means the measure of real GDP growth will be wrong as well. In addition to that, we have to think about the way the data is being used. An overall headline figure like GDP or things like GDP per capita don't necessarily show an accurate change in living standards and shouldn't be given the sort of importance that they are from many people from that point of view. As Mr. Sweeney says, the possibility of mismeasurement in national accounts is well known, but the misuse of those data is more consequential. By misuse, we mean the casual assertion that these statistics represent everyday concepts of living standards and the cost of living. This error is clearest when we examine long term GDP estimates and ask whether it's plausible that living standards were changing in the steady linear way that the long term real per capita GDP charts suggest. Similarly, we sometimes encounter claims of jumping real wages and even rising living standards after the 14th century plague. Historical accounts of life after 1348 in Western Europe do not, however, paint such a rosy picture of life in that period. Last year's GDP data will hardly inform future generations about economic life in 2020. He points out that there are efforts to rectify these problems by using alternative data, things such as disease based price indexes, happiness measures, activity trackers sourced from satellites and things like the Billion Prices Project to track data from retailers around the world on a daily basis. Now, obviously, we can look at all of this from a trading or investing point of view and think about what sort of errors in judgment are made by looking at data in the wrong way or even by looking at the completely wrong data altogether. But when that's the case, the only people that are harmed are us. You know, we'll be making decisions incorrectly and we will suffer the consequences or any clients that we might have will suffer the consequences. But the bigger issue is how all of this relates to policy decisions. As Mr. Sweeney says, for example, should additional fiscal stimulus measures target overall GDP or should it target households or businesses that are suffering most for no fault of their own? The broadening use of contemporary narrow data is offering rich perspectives of economic life. Alternative indicators have enabled excellent real time analysis during the pandemic. This has helped to guide policy decisions and minimize the macroeconomic damage. So will 2021 be the year for a data revolution? I'd say it's unlikely from a policy point of view, but I definitely think there's food for thought there for us as traders and investors. I know from when we looked really closely at the pork industry when there was the virus there before the global pandemic started, different virus, the use of alternative data was absolutely essential for making any sort of decisions or judgments about the situation. But how about you? What sort of alternative data are you already using? And if you aren't already using it, will you be looking to switch to using more alternative data?
And what do you make of the argument from James Sweeney? Do you think he's right or do you see some flaws there? Let me know in the comment section down below. I always like to read your thoughts. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.